And now we want to, it's beautiful that we're wearing names of people who were directly impacted by the bombs. And now we want to hear from Reverend Nobuaki Hanaoka, our special guest speaker, who was an infant when the bomb fell on Nagasaki on August 9th, 1945. His mother and sister died from illnesses linked to radiation poisoning and his brother died at age 39 from premature aging associated with fallout from the bomb. Reverend Hanaoka is a retired minister in the United Methodist Church who came to the United States following seminary training in Japan. He has settled in the Bay Area where he speaks, writes, and teaches on topics of peace and human rights. Please welcome Reverend Hanaoka. Thank you very much. I'm here with a sense of urgency now, more than ever, because we're going back to the Cold War era nuclear arms race mentality. For a while, we thought we were moving in the right direction, slow but steadily. Uh, we were disarming, trying to disarm. But now, we have the president who ordered the Pentagon to reestablish our nuclear superiority. 73 years ago, on August 6th, 8.15 a.m., the first nuclear bomb was detonated in the mid-air over the city of Hiroshima beautiful green city of Hiroshima, Hiroshima. And three days later, in Nagasaki, and death toll from these two bombings alone reached quarter of a million by the end of that year. There are three ways that nuclear atomic bomb killed so many people. The first was the blast. It knocked out just about every building within the two miles radius. And people were crash crushed under the fallen buildings and hit by the flying debris. And the blast was followed by the huge, immense fireball that keeps growing, growing, growing until it engulfed the whole city. The surface temperature of that fireball was 10,000 degree Fahrenheit, twice as hot as the surface of the sun. People who were touched by the fireball, the expanding fireball, were instantly evaporated, and the whole city caught fire. More insidious and deadlier were the nuclear radioactive uh, fallout. Small particles, invisible particles that spread into the atmosphere over the wider area and then came down with the rain. Do you know what that means? Air was contaminated. Water was contaminated. The people who were su who survived the initial impact still had to breathe and drink. There was no way to escape the radiation. Fortunately, our family was living outside of the city, miles away from the city limit. And, and there are a couple mountains in between that shielded us from the blast and the fire. But within a few years, radiation began to affect my family. When I was in the first grade, my mother died. As far back as I can recall, she was in bed looking 
prepared, weak. I knew she was my mother, but I couldn't even talk to her. I was scared. And after that, my sister died. She suffered also from leukemia. And then, about 30 years later, my brother died of the unknown illnesses. The doctor, unable to determine the cause of his death, they performed autopsy. And the doctor is shocked because the internal organ, his internal organs were those of the 80-year-old man. We suspected that it was, had something to do with the radiation. You know, nuclear bombs keep people suffering long after the end of the war. You know, 73 years ago, it came to Hiroshima Nagasaki. We still have our friends who are still suffering. The radiation that well, once it's uh, inside the body, our bodies, goes to the bone marrow, destroying the immune system, which makes the person getting sick all the time. Just like the AIDS patient or HIV, the same. And, and it's, people say it's like a holding a time bomb inside because you never know when you get sick, when you die. So uh, survivors, we call them survivors, but they call themselves, their lives, is a process of dying, slow, painful death. 73 years later, we're still talking about that. And then every time we get together, they say, how lucky were the ones who got killed instantly because they were spared of the long and miserable, painful suffering. I'm fortunate to be here, but a lot of people are not as fortunate as I am. After my sister died, my father was concerned that because, you know, his loved ones were dying one after another. He, he asked my, my sister's do doctor, what is going to happen to our family? The doctor said about the youngest one, me. If he was exposed to the radiation the same way as his mother and sister, he may not live to see his 10th birthday. I, I didn't know how to process that information that I had only had three years to live. I, I was in the, still in the second grade, I think. The, I, I was depressed, withdrawn, and I lost my speech. I didn't say a word, speak a word for a few months. When my 10th birthday came and gone, I was finally relieved. Then came the fits of what they call survivor's guilt. Why did such a loving mother, such a loving sister have to die so painfully. And I, a good for nothing kid, is still alive. For a long time after that, I felt deep inside that I had no rights to be alive. I don't want anybody to have to live like this. Nuclear bombs, nuclear weapons are the most inhumane, immoral, and 
weapons of mass annihilation is the most painful ways. You know, Hiroshima bomb was only uh, 50 kilotons of TNT. The largest, most powerful weapons today is a Russian-made bomb called uh, Tsar Bomba, which is 50 megaton, 3,300 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Mm -hmm. If the Hiroshima bomb, the rudimentary small bomb, inflicted so much pain and sufferings so for so long, you can imagine what these new weapons can do to us. It'll be not the disaster is not the word. It's a global suffering, global crime. Mr. President, if you want the peace prize, we know that if you're holding so much weapons, uh, if you, your weapons are so much superior to the rest of the world, you have no right to demand other states such as Iran and North Korea to disarm. The only way to be convinced, to be able to convince them to disarm is all of us, all nice nuclear states, to disarm together. Yes. Amen. So, Mr. President, if you want a peace prize, invite all these nine nuclear states together and to start discussing dismantling of all these criminal weapons. And ever since the end of the Cold War, we have been a bit complacent. But now, we should start raising our voices as loud as we can. No more a bomb. No more nuclear bomb. No more wars. Abolish these illegal weapons. You know, some scientists have estimated that the, the largest exploding uh, 50 megaton bomb uh, blasts will circle the, the whole earth three and a half times, spreading the uh, radiation all over the world. You can't allow that. So, my friends, start demanding. Start raising your voices. Start acting. No more nuclear weapons. Thank you.